going deep down into the sea or up into space or even into the high into the stratosphere are all risky propositions, especially when you're going on a system that is kind of a one of a kind, which not a lot of them have been built in which it's not been adequately tested uh, in which uh, maybe doesn't have the most experienced safety organization behind its design. So guys, these are things you need to consider. Right now we're in an era of tourism that's taking people deep into the sea and into space, or even in balloons floating in the stratosphere. All of these things should be examined in question, especially before you get on one of these ventures. And I dare say that you need to be people looking into it because you've got to wonder what just happened here with this Ocean Gate Titan submarine, submersible, let us say. Uh, guys, this thing has a lot of questions to be asked. I'm Greg Allison. This is the channel Galactic Gregs. And let me tell you about this. This thing was uh, questioned very much by even the uh, director of operations, oceanic operations of the outfit. Uh, he was actually fired. I kid you not, Mr. David Lockridge. He questioned this whole operation. He was the company's former director of marine operations. What he questioned was the whole thickness when they got the vehicle in. Now, the company claims that was a prototype, and they claim they uh, went with a different one, but the hole was only five inches thick, and he said it should have been seven. Now, what really happened? He was fired, and then they sued him for actually questioning the company, you know, the safety questions he proposed, and he wasn't the only one. There were two people in that company that questioned their safety procedures and got fired for it. That is totally inappropriate. Not only that, but the company refused to hire older, more experienced people because they wouldn't be imaginative. Well, look where they're at now. All right, and I'll do fairness, uh, 42 people have been down. This is this thing has gone down several times, but not that much. Guys, this uh, director of operations uh, wanted to know what was going on. He got fired for questioning it. That is totally inappropriate. Now, guys, I've got to re-up my screens. I got shut off here. So the guy, David Lockridge. So now let's, let's look at it some more. There is right now a uh, naval attempt to rescue this thing. This guys on board at best have, well, maybe 96 hours of oxygen on board. Now that 96 hours does not say that uh, they couldn't succumb to CO2 poison beforehand because there's nothing in this craft to uh, scrub out the CO2. There's nothing in it to... Uh, uh, keep them warm even uh, beyond a certain point because they may be sitting in there in the dark and it may be like a, a degree or two above freezing. So the chances are that they may have already passed away from hypothermia due to being too cold or from uh, maybe from um, CO2 poisoning. Or it could be that the hole breached and cracked and crushed. Every time they went down, it might have been that hole cracked just a little bit more. And successive stress on that hole might have finally just been too much. Uh, that last mission might have just uh, finished it off because it's a composite hole. And composites can crack. Uh, the little fibers can break. And you can't see it just looking at it. Uh, it takes some extensive non-destructive testing to be able to tell the uh, integrity of the fibers in a, a composite system like that. And sometimes you still might miss it. So that is the, the issue with these uh, carbon composites. Yeah, they're lightweight and they have a lot of strength per weight, but they may be like 10 times stronger in one direction than the other. So they're, they're kind of finicky to use. So guys, uh, what you have is a, a safety margin. Uh, margin of safety, design margin. It's like you have a certain amount that you need to maintain the pressure, but then you should build margin on it as a factor of safety. So if you required five inches, you add some more. And that's where you may be getting to the seven inches in the hole thickness. But there's other considerations for safety too. For example, uh, there's something called redundancy. They had critical systems on board, like their, their propulsion system, what they needed to get around. So did they actually take in that into account and have redundancy in any of the critical systems? What were the critical systems? Uh, you might also consider reliability. How do they look at the parts they were using for reliability? Did they do a reliability analysis? Uh, reliability is directly, uh, reversely proportional to parts count in any given string of a critical system. Of course, having multiple strings does not count for that because all a redundant string gives you more 
uh, safety and reliability in that fashion. So that's something a lot of safety engineers don't really understand when they do the parts count. <laughs> so uh, these are all critical things, guys. Uh, I heard they had problems with batteries before. Did they have redundant batteries? Do they have, uh, you know, maybe it cost too much. They didn't want to do it. Uh, yeah, there's just too many questions here. Too many questions. It, it just leaves propulsion. Uh, now, supposing they had seven means to get this thing to the surface uh, and had some redund redundancy in that. They had sandbags they could drop, lead pipes they could drop, and some kind of balloon they could inflate to give them more buoyancy to get them back up to the surface. Now, did it actually get back to the surface? Maybe it did. But still, there's no evidence that they had any means to open up valves to get in outside air. And what they don't have is the ability to open it from the out inside. So you tell me these guys pay $250,000 to go down in submersible to uh, 1,200 feet, uh, no, what, uh, yeah, uh, 12,500 feet, something like that, below the sea level in a vehicle that uh, they can't even open. It does prove that maybe, you know, being a billionaire doesn't mean that you're, you're uh, not an idiot. <laughs> Pardon me. You know, guys, some things you need to look at real hard before you get on board. You know, I, I, I asked the same thing about uh, Virgin Galactic. You know, they got the wings that some people have said are cracked like eggshells, and people pay a big, they're paying big price tags to fly on that thing. You go to their website, it's all just market fluff. You go to the website, it says, oh, this is beautiful, for, fly with us. There's no d details in there telling you why that system's good or what they've done to, to fix things. No, they don't even talk about that. I wasn't flying it. Not until they can give me some data, you know, I would not find anything that's so uh, vacant, so void in data telling me what it is and how it works and how good it is. You know, uh, don't do it. I wouldn't get on any system that's just all fluff in their marketing. Of course, that's what people respond to today. That's the marketing age. Well, then you're a fool if you go for that. Holy smoke. That means people are shallow. If you're that shallow and gonna put up that kind of money and risk your life, well, they don't even tell you what kind of safety organization they got. So there you go. They didn't want to hire anybody over 50, the experienced people who understand the basics of safety, uh, reliability, and things like that. The people that's got experience operating in the ocean. If you're going to take on such a thing, you're going deep. You need to have the best quality people you can have on your team. I'll give Blue Origin cre credit, at least I see on their websites, they're trying to hire some safety people for the new Shepherd. So there you go, guys. Uh, the good, yeah, this thing may be floating on the surface of the ocean right now, and the guys may have still passed away just from CO2 poison. Or they may be alive. They've heard banging sounds. And, you know, they're told to bang on the hull so people can find them. So you got no other way to communicate. You know, the communication, unless you've got a cable, don't work through the ocean like that. Radio waves don't propagate through the ocean. Uh, you can do sound. So banging on the hull is sound. So, guys. There is, a, um, there is a, a naval system down there that, that could possibly rescue them. Well, it's not down there yet. It takes 24 hours to prep this thing, and then they got to get out of the water, and hopefully they find it and then get this thing down to them if it is underwater before the guys pass away. The naval system is called the Navy's Flyaway Deep Ocean Salvage System. It's capable of lifting 60,000 pounds. This craft, the Titan, submersible, is 20,000 pounds. So it's within the lift capacity of uh, the uh, Navy's uh, flyaway deep ocean salvage system, if it can get out there fast enough. But the time is ticking. Now, you know, they got a diver on board the system, at least on the Titan, and he's hopefully telling the guys to be calm so that they don't consume oxygen as fast, don't produce as much CO2, stay calm, don't move, keep your movements down, keep your metabolism low. That's what they should be telling them. Keep your metabolism low when it's, you're on the verge of hypothermia and you're trying to shiver, it may not work. Do they have blankets on board? What was considered? What went into this mission? We'll find out more soon when these guys come up. But uh, there's just more questions than uh, there are answers in this system right now, guys. So pardon me for being blunt. Pardon me for being uh, critical of this system. But uh, seriously, guys, the uh, Titanic sub-CEO, <laughs> well, the name of it is Titan, and that's kind of odd. So you name it Ocean Gate, your company. Ocean Gate sounds a whole lot like uh, Watergate or Heaven's Gate. And then you name it Titan as you go into the Titanic, which is famous for sinking. You're going to a graveyard. And then you don't think about safety. You're going down to great depths. 
And, you know, there's just a lot of things that weren't thought out. And uh, there had been problems in the past. There was talk of uh, one mission that uh, had issues like they were in a dark, they couldn't communicate. And uh, when they got back, their uh, internet was blocked, so they couldn't tweet home about their bad experience. So, guys, there's just too many questions about this. Too many questions. Before, I think space tourism may be the thing that opens space up, you know, and, and helps to pave the way for launch systems and things that'll be good. And in the same way for going into the ocean, exploring the ocean, but you've got to pay attention to the safety. And if you're going to be on one of these, you need to be asking questions. You need to want to know what went into the design of this. What did they factor in? Ask them what's their safety margin. Ask them what are the critical systems. Ask them what's the redundancy. If you're going to get on something like this, or if you got a loved one, somebody you know heading out to something like this, ask those questions. Uh, you know, we're going to have people flying around the stratospheric balloons in the near future. We're going to have people going maybe under the sea again, unless this kind of kills the market. Uh, and then there's uh, space tourism that apparently is finally on the verge of, of taking off. These are all questions to ask in any system you're putting people on. All right, enough said. So with that, I'm going to say be careful, be safe, and do, but do explore if you can. But do it as safe as you can. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm going to show you something. I know a little bit about this topic. I'm gonna show you a picture of a rocket that I actually ran from my life from 25 years ago yesterday. Why? Because the safety engineers almost got me killed. I'm serious, ignorant, Inex an ignorant brain dead safety engineer asked the wrong questions and complicated design in the wrong direction and nearly got me killed. Running from that rocket, the halo, Skylines 2 rocket, which is hanging today from the ceiling of the Straight to L Brewery in Huntsville, Alabama. We just, had, we just had a little reunion dinner there last night of some of us that were involved in that mission. And that was a pretty heroin mission for us in many ways. <laughs> but, you know, that's why you need good safety people. That's why you need mature safety people. That's why uh, you don't want to just go with just, you know, some kid out of college which apparently is what happened. Anyway, my friends, thank y'all for watching. I'm Greg Allison, Galactic Gregs. And with that, I'm going to say, Greg out.